What if I told you that the next global tech war isn't being fought over chips, semiconductors, or 5G towers? What if the real battle isn't about physical infrastructure at all, but about something even more foundational, something invisible, yet powerful enough to redefine how the world communicates? I'm talking about the very language that digital systems use to speak to each other. Not programming languages, not machine code, but the protocols, the shared rules and formats that allow data to move across borders, platforms, and cultures. Now picture this. You're a Chinese tech executive. You've spent years building a cutting-edge AI system, a platform that could revolutionize everything from medical diagnostics to logistics and smart cities. The technology is brilliant. The opportunity is global. But as soon as you try to connect your system with networks outside China, you hit a wall. Not a firewall, not a trade embargo, but something even trickier. The structure of your data doesn't match what the rest of the world expects. Your system speaks one dialect of digital language, but the international web speaks another. And that mismatch is enough to derail your expansion, limit your partnerships, and shut you out of the global marketplace. That's not a distant scenario. It's already happening. And it's about to get much bigger. Just a few weeks ago, in a meeting that flew under the radar of mainstream media, Chinese officials made a decision that could ultimately rewire the entire Internet. They announced that all Chinese companies, from the largest tech conglomerates to the smallest startups, must transition away from U.S.-originated data protocols within the next 18 months. That includes standards that have formed the backbone of the Internet for over a decade, such as JSON schema, REST APIs, OAuth, and others. These are not just technical details. They're the DNA of how modern digital platforms interact. What China is proposing, and now enforcing, is an entirely new system of digital communication. Not just for domestic use, but for any company, anywhere in the world, that wants to do business with China. This isn't about data privacy or protecting national security, although those are certainly factors. This is about creating an independent digital ecosystem, governed by Chinese standards, with Chinese oversight, optimized for Chinese technologies. What most analysts failed to understand is that this move wasn't made in isolation. It's not a spontaneous policy shift. It's the latest piece in a strategy that's been unfolding quietly for over a decade. From quantum computing research to sovereign cloud systems, from indigenous chip manufacturing to national-level AI infrastructure, China has been methodically constructing the scaffolding of a digital world that no longer relies on Western rules. This is not just an upgrade. It's a fork in the road. The new protocols being introduced by China are fundamentally incompatible with the existing global Internet standards. At first glance, the differences might seem minor, subtle shifts in how data is structured or how APIs are designed. But at a deeper level, China's approach reflects a radically different philosophy about what data is and how it should be treated. Under the Western model, data is abstract, universal, and context-free. A number is a number. A timestamp is a timestamp. A string of text is just that, text. It doesn't matter where it came from or who created it. But under China's model, data is inherently contextual. Every piece of information is embedded with metadata about where it originated, what legal system it falls under, what cultural norms apply to it, and how it should be interpreted by machines. These are called context-aware data protocols, and they represent a fundamental shift in how digital systems process information. Data is no longer just content. It's behavior, environment, and identity all bundled together. This shift may sound technical, but its implications are sweeping because it means that every interaction between systems, from e-commerce to cloud AI, becomes a potential point of regulatory control. China's regulators gain unparalleled visibility into how foreign companies operate within its borders, not just from the surface level, but deep into the code, into the structure of the data itself. Every data transaction becomes legible, traceable, and enforceable within a legal framework defined by the Chinese state. And here's the part that changes everything. This new system isn't just aimed at domestic control. It's being positioned as a global alternative. Any company that wants to work with Chinese partners, even if they're based in Berlin, Sao Paulo, or Bangalore, will be required to adopt these protocols. The cost of maintaining two separate data architectures one for China, one for the rest of the world, is already driving multinational corporations to make a choice. And many are choosing to conform to Chinese standards, not just for their Chinese operations, but globally. Some of the world's largest automakers, for example, have already begun quietly transitioning their global systems to align with Chinese data formats. Why? 
Because modern cars aren't just machines anymore. They're data centers on wheels, constantly transmitting real-time information about location, performance, user behavior, and more. Selling a connected vehicle in China now requires full compatibility with China's digital rules. Maintaining separate systems is inefficient, so companies are aligning everything, not just for convenience, but to future-proof their businesses. Financial institutions are facing a similar reckoning. Cross-border payment systems, which have long relied on standardized protocols like swift messaging formats, are now being forced to develop alternatives that are compliant with China's digital framework. And in many cases, these aren't just technical adjustments. They're architectural changes that alter how financial data moves across borders, how transactions are authenticated, and who has oversight. And then there's the quantum layer, perhaps the most ambitious piece of the puzzle. While Western tech firms are still struggling to retrofit quantum capabilities onto legacy Internet systems, China is building something new from scratch. Their emerging data standards are designed from the beginning to be quantum compatible. They're integrating these standards with their own satellite networks, including the Beidou Navigation System, and using them to support AI and IoT applications that operate in real time across distributed devices in complex urban environments. In other words, China isn't trying to catch up to the West. It's building something the West isn't even aiming for. And it's already spreading. In just the last six months, countries representing more than 3 billion people have entered early-stage discussions about adopting Chinese digital protocols. Not because they're being forced to, but because these new systems offer solutions that the existing Western models can't, or won't, deliver. Whether it's more granular data governance, better AI integration, or more localized compliance mechanisms, China's approach is appealing to nations looking to modernize fast without depending on Silicon Valley. And that's the deeper strategy here. By making the Chinese digital system the most advanced, the most integrated, and the most compatible with the next generation of technology, AI, quantum, 6G, machine-to-machine -machine commerce, China is setting a new default not just for their domestic market, but for the world. This is how global standards are born, not through mandates, but through momentum, through utility, through inevitability. The consequences are enormous. Multinational companies will soon face a binary choice. Adapt to Chinese data standards and stay connected to the fastest growing digital market in the world or stick to Western norms and risk being locked out of a system that may soon represent the majority of global users. Even major American tech giants, companies that once dismissed non-U.S. standards as fringe or incompatible, are beginning to quietly build Chinese compliant systems. Not because they agree with China's governance model, but because they recognize a hard truth. Exclusion from China means exclusion from the future of global tech commerce. This isn't just a tech story. This is the beginning of a new kind of Cold War, one where the weapons aren't missiles or tanks, but protocols and standards. One where domination isn't about controlling physical territory, but about setting the rules that everyone else has to play by. One where the battlefield is invisible, but the consequences are real, economic, political, and cultural. The world is splitting. Not just politically, but digitally. Two ecosystems, two rule books, two visions for how the Internet should work. One rooted in openness and interoperability, at least in theory. The other rooted in sovereignty, context, and strategic independence. The question isn't whether this split is happening. It already is. The real question is, who's ready for it? Let us know what you think. Will countries embrace China's digital standards or push back with their own? What will this mean for the future of the Internet? and for who gets to define it. And if you found this breakdown useful, stay tuned, because the story isn't slowing down. The next decade will redefine everything we thought we knew about digital globalization. This is Revo Now, decoding tomorrow's hidden tech landscape today.